Hello, hello, and yonjo everyone. In today's video, I'll be showing you guys how to make stuffed chicken wings. A lot of you have requested me to show you how to make stuffed chicken wings. So today I'll be showing you guys pretty much the whole package. I'll show you how to make my favorite dipping sauce to go with it. I'll show you how to debone a chicken wing and then I'll show you guys how to stuff it and then cook it. And stuffed chicken wing is a labor of love. It does take a lot of time and patience to make this but it is so worth it at the end. Super delicious. Um, I only make it once a year because of how labor intensive it is. I know a lot of you guys might be a little bit intimidated and and don't really have the patience to make it because of how much labor you have to put into making stuffed chicken wings but i hope this video helps you out especially for those who are a little bit more intimidated in making stuffed chicken wings so let's go ahead and start making some stuffed chicken wings because they do take a lot of time to make let's go okay so the first thing i want to show you guys is how to make the dipping sauce so i'll show you guys how to make a sweet chili dipping sauce so in a pot i have some minced up garlic and chili peppers here. This is about six clove of garlic and the pepper that I'm using are Fresno peppers. So these are the pepper I'm using. It's pretty, it has a kick, but it's also kind of sweet. So if you guys want more spice, you can definitely use more of this. Um, if you guys want it more on the sweeter side, you guys can definitely use more of a milder uh, red pepper if you guys want to. But I'm using Fresno chili pepper just because I kind of want some kick, but also a little bit of sweetness from it. So I'm using two of these plus one Thai chili pepper for an extra kick and six cloves of garlic minced it up and this is what you get here. I just put it through my food processor, pretty simple. Again, if you guys want more of a sweeter side, definitely use um, more mild red peppers if you guys prefer. So I'll just put that in a pot. I have a cup of sugar. It is called sweet chili sauce, so it needs a little bit of sweetness to it, more like a lot of sweetness. <laughs> Some vinegar. This is just regular distilled vinegar white distilled vinegar, some water, and a little bit of salt. Okay, so give this a stir and let it come to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, we'll let it simmer for about one or two minutes before we add in the thickener. All right, so two minutes of just slow simmering this. Let's go ahead and add in the thickener. So the thickener I'm gonna be using is potato starch with a little bit of water, about a tablespoon of potato starch to two tablespoons of water. So I just made a little bit of slurry there and we're gonna add that straight into the sweet chili that's boiling. Go ahead and mix that really well. And you'll notice it start to thicken up a little bit. Again, if you don't have potato starch, you could use cornstarch or tapioca starch. I've used both of those as well. I just like potato starch because it gives the sweet chili sauce a more clear uh, and translucent look to it. Okay, once this comes to a boil and has thickened, then we can turn off the heat. And this will thicken even more when it gets refrigerated or when it cools down. Okay. So that's good. Turn off the heat. And then the last thing we're gonna add is some fish sauce. Just a little bit of fish sauce in there. I like to add it when the heat's off so that your house doesn't smell like fish sauce. <laughs> and we'll put this in a glass container and keep it in the fridge and let it cool before we can finish it up. Okay, let's go ahead and pour this into a glass jar so we can store it. And this will keep in a refrigerator for up to one or two months for a great dipping sauce for whatever you guys like to eat it with. All right, so now it's time for me to show you guys how to debone a chicken wing. This is probably one of the most tedious part of this whole recipe is to debone a chicken wing. It does take practice and patience to do it. So um, you guys might have to do a little bit of practice before you can actually debone it nicely. Uh, so I am using a whole wing here today with the drum mat and the wing and the tip here. I'm using the whole wing just so that I have more room to stuff it in. So uh, we're gonna work with this today. So the first thing I like to do is these two joints here. I'm gonna go ahead and break it to loosen it up. You guys can feel and hear it break. 
once the joints are loosened, I'm gonna use a knife here. This is how I grew up um, deboning chicken is to use a knife. If you guys don't wanna use a knife, I'll show you guys a different way to do it as well. And all I'm gonna do is go around this section of the meat and fat and tissues here and loosen it up from the bone. And make sure you don't pierce through the skin where the stuffing is gonna be located. And all you're gonna do is basically take your knife and any of the connected fat and meat that's on the bone, just take your knife and loosen it up. Okay, once you loosen and get down to that joint, go ahead and take out the bone. And there's that. You got that part out. Now you get down to the uh, wing part here, which is kind of more complicated because you have this joint right here that's connected. So at this point, make sure you do your best not to poke any holes. So with the knife here, if you guys want, use a cutting board. I'm kind of used to not using cutting board, so I'm just going to use that and cut the joint off like that. out and then you get down to the two bones that's connected to the wing area. At this point go ahead and again just loosen up the fat and the meat from the bone. And at this point, just use your fingers to help you feel where everything's connected. And again, just be careful with your knife. You know, make sure not to cut yourself. And once I feel like it's loosened up, I just use my fingers to help scrape down any of the connected meat to fat from the bone. And just pop it out. Just like that. And then go ahead and just rewind that back to the beginning. And there you have it. You just deboned a chicken wing. Did a pretty good job. No holes. This is where we're going to fill it. All right, so I showed you guys how to debone a chicken wing with a knife. But this time I'm going to show you guys how to debone it with a kitchen scissor here. And this is the kitchen scissor that's fairly sharp to cut through meat. So make sure you have a really sharp kitchen scissor that you can actually use for meat. So again, you're just going to take a chicken wing, loosen up the joints here. And basically the same concept, you're going to take your scissors and just loosen up the meat and fat from the bone. The scissor is a little bit more safer, especially for those who are a little bit scared to cut yourself using a knife. Um, I personally like to use the scissors just because it's a lot safer and it's kind of a lot faster too. So go ahead and get down to the joint. Just use your scissors to cut that. Just make sure you don't poke through the skin. So that bone is out. Now we get to the connected joint here. Take your scissors and you're going to cut that joint off. And again, same process, just make sure you don't poke through any holes. Take scissors and cut through. Any connected fat here. Okay, that's loosen. Then the fat that here that's aligned with the bone, the scissor is great for you to kind of cut through it. And at this point, I can feel like everything's kind of loosened, so I'm just gonna take my fingers and scrape down the meat to loosen up the bone. Boom. 
take the bone off and unwind it back and there you have it nice boneless chicken wing here yeah so yeah I'll show you guys how to do it with the scissors this is a lot safer and it's fairly quick too versus a knife um, you guys can choose and pick what you prefer um, Again, I prefer to use the scissors just because it's safer and I get it done a lot faster compared to using a knife. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and finish deboning all of these chicken wings and then uh, I'll show you guys how to make the stuffing. Okay, so we are finally done deboning the chicken wing. Um, I'm doing about 15 chicken wings today, so that roughly took me about a good 40 minutes to debone. Um, it might take a little bit longer for you guys if you guys have a little bit of trouble deboning it, which, you know, does take practice. So after it is deboned, we are going to go ahead and season it. So it's pretty basic seasoning. I mean, chicken wings is pretty good, just salt and pepper. Honestly, for me, I like it really simple, but um, we're gonna just put a little bit more seasoning to it. So we are going to go ahead and season this with some black and white pepper here. I like a combo of both. You guys can just use black pepper if you guys prefer. Some sugar. I have some garlic powder here. Fish sauce. A little bit of salt and some dark soy sauce this is just regular dark soy sauce not the sweetened one make sure you guys leave the read the label I should say dark soy sauce okay go ahead and just mix this up so a lot of people do it differently you guys can definitely season with your favorite type of chicken seasoning works just as well just be mindful of the salt level with the filling all right, so this is good. We are going to go ahead and let this marinate while we take care of the filling. I'll show you guys how to do the filling. Um, so just go ahead and let this sit and marinate. All right, so let's go ahead and do the filling. Before we start, I wanted to show you guys some of the stuff that I had to pre-soak before I can use it. So in the filling, I am using a white fungus today. Um, some of you guys may know what the white fungus is or have used it for salads, but I'm gonna be using this as part of my filling today. And this is what it looks like after it's soaked. And this is what it looks like dried. Looks like this. All you gotta do is soak this in some warm water for a good 30 minutes until it starts to bloom and get softened like this. And the other thing I needed to soak was my bean thread noodles here. I am using two packets here today. This is what the dried packet looks like. I'm just using two bundles here and I soaked it in some warm water for a good 30 minutes or so, drained it, and then just chopped it up with a scissor to make it a little bit easier to eat and mix up. All right, so let's go ahead and start mixing everything together. Okay, so the filling is pretty much the same filling that you would use for making egg rolls or spoon rolls. Um, it's pretty simple, it just has a lot of prep to do. So in a bowl, I'm gonna be adding some ground pork here. You guys can definitely use chicken since we're doing chicken wings but I like to use pork because it's a lot fattier and taste wise it's pretty good as a filling and then I have some carrots shredded up bean thread noodles some minced up garlic some green onions I like a lot of green onions in the filling so you guys can you know add as much as you want and I'm adding two types of mushrooms. So this is the wood ear mushroom just for color and a little bit of texture. Not too much chopped up pretty fine so it's easier to eat. Some chopped up shallots as well. And the white fungus. So to prepare this, what you have to do is, so this part here you wanna take out and use your scissors to kind of just trim off this bottom connected part here because we don't want that. The really yellow parts just throw it away and then you'll just use this part here and I'm just gonna rip it in there so all you can do is just rip this part into the filling 
If you guys can't find any white fungus at your local Asian market, you can definitely just sub it out for cabbage. I'm not adding, I'm not adding cabbage into the filling just because um, of the excess moisture. But again, cabbage is totally fine. You guys can definitely add cabbage and substitute of the white fungus here. So to season, all I'm gonna do is add some salt, lots of black pepper, cause I like black pepper, and then some oyster sauce. And that's about it. So once that's in, go ahead and just mix this up until it's all nice and incorporated. Okay, so let's go ahead and stuff the chicken wing. Um, there's really no good way to do it besides to actually just use your fingers and stuff it inside. I mean, you guys can use a funnel, but it's really kind of pointless to do it because you don't need much anyways inside. So here is our marinating chicken wing here that we debone. All we're gonna do is basically take a little bit of our stuffing here and we're just gonna put it through. So depending on how big the chicken wing is, the filling amount might be a little bit different. So that is filled. I don't want to fill it too tight because it will expand as it cooks in the oven. So I have some room over here where the filling doesn't pop out because it will pop out when it cooks. Other than that, you guys can feel where the filling is located. And there it is. It is nice and filled. Pretty easy. All right, so once that's filled, let's go in and place this on a baking sheet with a rack on it. I'm just gonna finish filling these up and then we can start cooking it up. Woohoo, we finally finished stuffing the chicken wing and I put it on a baking sheet with foil and a rack underneath of it. I am going to be cooking this in the oven today. Um, there's different methods of cooking stuffed chicken wings. You guys can definitely air fry it. You can also deep fry it, but I prefer to cook it in the oven. Um, I have done it deep fried before. Um, I also have used the air fryer to fry up the stuffed chicken wings as well. It works just as great, but it doesn't turn out as pretty as I want it to be. So my favorite way to cook it is in the oven. By the way, this is the amount of filling that I have left over. It's probably about like a half a cup left over of the filling, which is not bad. What I like to do is just stir fry this up until the meat is fully cooked and just eat it as like a basic noodle stir fry. Um, so don't waste it. It's still really delicious. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and put this in a 400 degree Fahrenheit preheated oven under bake for a good 30 minutes. And then we can check to see how the coloring is. Okay, it's been 30 minutes. Let's go in and flip them over. So I'm just gonna flip them over to the other side so that they can brown as well, cause it's still pretty pale. All right, let's go ahead and put this back in for another 20 minutes and we'll see how it is after that. Okay, they are finally cooked. It's a little bit darker in the camera just because of the dark soy sauce, so. Don't mind the dark spots, plus I kind of like my chicken extra crispy, so cook it how you guys like it. <laughs> it was a good 50 to 55 minutes of cooking it um, fully, so it cooks in the center. Other than that, it's pretty much ready. We can plate it, and I'll cut it in half for you guys to see the inside. 